on this episode of Carnage, we're going to visit an old friend. ka -chow. Say hello to my little friend. That's right, Lightning McBarrow is making an appearance once again. But let's look back a bit at the history of this car. Originally, we were going to build up a Mazda 121. Yes, that's, that's right. We're going to do a 121 bubble car with an LS and twin turbos hanging out of the bonnet and take it to Red Center Nats and cruise around the streets and do all crazy stuff with it. But three months out from the event, we thought, oh, this is actually going to be a bigger job than we thought. You know, so we bought an MX-5 instead. At least it was rear-wheel drive to start off with but it was a very manky car. I think it had spent time underwater. It just stank. And uh, so we stripped it completely out. It cost us $1,700, but yeah, we stripped it out. And with the help of guys at All Race, we uh, tubbed it and caged it and all that sort of thing. And they did the engine plate as well. And then we took it down to MPW where the guys lent us workshop space and tools and everything. And we got twin turbo LS1 in there in 12 days. That's everything. Everything was done in 12 days. We finished three o'clock in the morning, jumped in our tow vehicle, towed all the way to Alice Springs, 28 hours straight. Me and the boss, Simon Telford, just swapping drivers and sleeping the entire way, never stopping. It was the dumbest thing we've ever done. But we had a fat time up there, that's for sure. It was flat black, twin turbos. We went drag racing, we went cruising. We did everything we set out to do. It was a good time. And then everyone kind of forgot about the car. It was sort of like no one cared about LSs anymore and LS swaps. But we rebranded the car. We did a, a white wrap on it with the Australian flag design. We took it to Summonats. We took it to Power Cruise down at Simmons Plains where Bubba was drifting the thing on Lincoln Corners. It was just an amazing time. But like I said, people stopped caring about the LS1 and the twin turbo setup. So we decided to drop a Barra in there. And the Barra has been, well, a bit of fun. It makes plenty of power. It makes as much power as that twin turbo LS made. However, um, it's had some issues as well. You know, we've redone the wrap with the McBarra, you know, the Lightning McQueen style Lightning McBarra job on it. It is, um, yeah, been a lot of fun. We did break an engine in this because we had a, just a silver top in there before, so a standard barometer, and they don't like over 18 PSI, and we cut the engine in two. Now it's got a green top in it, good for 25 PSI, but it maxed out the turbo. So we had to upgrade the turbo, and that has had a roll-on effect that means we've had to upgrade a lot more. So let's walk you through that. So let's have a look under the bottom. It's all pretty light. So, as I said before, it's got a green top in it and it's got valve springs, pump gears, all that sort of stuff. It's a pretty good thing. Yeah, you know, we know these engines will handle, you know, 25 pounds of boost, no worries. It had uh, one of the turbos off the twin turbo LS1 before. It was only good for about 650, 700 flywheel. So we maxed it out at about 500 rear wheel horsepower. And um, so we talked to the guys at Force Fed Motorsports they have sent us out one of these Pulsar turbos. It's like a GT3584, whatever they call it. I'm not sure. But it will have a lot more horsepower capability than the turbo that we had on it. However, in that whole time frame, we decided to run the dump pipe downwards. Andra and IHRA were kind of unhappy with the pipe sticking out through the bonnet. They wanted to see it go down, so we had to go down with the dump pipe out the side to make all that work and that involved a lot more work than we thought. So let's lift it up and have a look at what we did underneath. So the original cross member in the MX-5 was this big chunky affair. It used to fill this entire area basically and quite a bit up here towards the steering shaft. Um, that's all gone. Now we've gone with this tubular subframe here from uh, the V8 Miata, I think it is in the States. 
and yeah, that cost us a pretty penny, but it was worth it because that allowed us to run the dump pipe down here. The guys at Max Performance have done this for us because they're really good at stainless and TIG and all that sort of stuff. So they've run the dump down here and then out the side. Unfortunately, in amongst all that, one of the brake lines had to be cut to create space. So we're gonna have to rerun one of the brake lines. So that's one of the jobs on our list. Um, we've got to do, redo the wheel alignment. The wheel alignment's all balked now because all the subframe and everything had to come out. But there's a lot of little jobs that have to be done. But yeah, this subframe, wow. So much nicer than the original. And for those that are new to the channel, we'll run through the rest of the drive line. It's got a full manual power glide, like a full reed case, like full on power glide, trans braked. Um, it's got a heavy duty tail shaft here to imagine with massive unis. It's got a nine inch diff, quite narrow. It's got VL rear discs on it, uh, VL Commodore rear discs, obviously standard Mazda front discs. Yeah, it's a pretty tough little setup. You know, triangulated four link, Pretty serious bit of gear this, and it has gone 9.97. That was with the twin turbo LS1. I think it'll do something similar with the barra in it, but uh, yeah, that's what I really want to do. I want to take this out here with the barra. Let's run nines with it, see what it does. And then after that, well, who knows? Maybe we'll sell it, maybe we'll strip it out. I know it's got a lot of money's worth of parts in this car. So we can reuse, you know, the transmission, the diff, the dash, it's got a digital dash in it. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this we can use in other cars. So, hmm. Uh, First though, let's run nines. So the brake line from the rear has been cut. We're gonna have to uh, redo that. I'm just trying to work out how and how we're gonna do it. Probably could have been left in place, to be honest, and some heat wrap put around it, but, uh, oh well, it's done now, so uh, yeah. Let's cut this off so we know what size tube we've got, and we'll go down the brake place and go get some uh, brake line tubing, some fittings. Yeah. We'll see if we can fix this. So we have been down to the brake parts store. We've got ourselves some hard lines, some brake line, 3 stainless steel, comes in coils, which makes it easier to package, I guess. Uh, so we have to straighten that out and flare it and cut it and do all those things. So to help us do that, we have this brake flaring kit from Raceworks and here it is already mounted in the vise. Pretty awesome. And uh, this will help us do perfect double flares for our brake fittings. Now we did try a cheapy $20 eBay kit and it was a massive failure. Um, they say they'll do a nice double flare, they, they really don't. So anyway, I'll show you how to use this. They're not cheap, they're about 500 bucks, but they are worth it. I mean, if you're gonna do multiple cars, brake lines or a big brake installation, I think they're worth their weight in gold. So, I'll show you what I mean. All right. Just for the ease of demonstration, we're gonna show you how to do this on this short piece of pipe. Now, we've already used our little pipe cutter to cut the end and it's made a bit of a mess at the end. So to tidy that up, they reckon you gotta ream it out with this little tool, but they never work, they're useless. These things, useless. So what I'm going to do here is use my drill bit in my Ryobi and it's the right size, just make sure I've got that right, there we go, okay so that's the right size, it's all nice and clean now, tap out any rubbish, now you've just got to file the end slightly to, they reckon a kind of a 45 degree chamfer just on the end of the pipe. I'm sure someone somewhere will be questioning everything I do and I don't care. Okay. So we've got our hard line prepared. We'll just unlock the top. We've got two rectangular dies in here, 3 16 
to suit our hard line. I'll slide that in, pop the handle back in. Now we've got a flat face here. It says OP0, so operation zero. So I'm just going to seat everything. So it'll seat the dies and it'll seat the line. Lock it in place. All right. Nice and tight. Okay, so we're looking for 3 16th and OP1 right there. So now, okay, just pull it until you feel it resists too much. Um, and then we go OP2, 3 16th. So this is the second operation of our double flare. Okay, so now loosen that off, pull the pin, and there we have perfect double flare. Good. Now I have made the mistake that everyone is going to make and I didn't put the fitting in. So you got to remember, before you do anything, make sure your fitting goes on and it goes the right way. <laughs> I was going to do that to demonstrate, you know, that you had to put the fitting in and then I forgot to do it anyway. So, just an example there, but we have double flared both ends just to show that we can. So now, we've got to do some measuring and some bending and then some flaring and get our brake line done for the Mazda. Fun. So that's the rear brake line we've got. It sits like that in the car, and we've just got to make that longer so we can put a joiner up further. So now we've got to straighten out some of our coil here and try and make something up that's, uh, well, the same. They do make special tools to do this. We do not have Okay, so we'll give ourselves a bit extra to play with to start off with. Yeah, we're gonna do a, a 90. Get things started. Nice little bender tool here. From Matt's collection. Okay, so we've done a trial fit of our hard line, our new hard line, and it looks like it's gonna fit. Uh, once I get it in, yeah, but, yep, that'll fit, that'll fit. Cool, which means now I have to pull it all out again and uh, measure up to where we're gonna put our joiner, and we'll flare the other end.
So all we have to do with this one is trim the end off here. I've already pre-measured it. Put a fitting on there and we've got a joiner that comes in from the rear brake line. So there'll be a joiner there. Don't freak out, there was always a joiner in the system. It's done plenty of miles with a joiner in there. So don't freak out, it'll be fine. It will be fine. Don't do that, kids. And that is sweet. How good is that? Seriously, I've never bra made brake lines in my life, but there we have it. Makes it look easy, doesn't it? Cool. Okay, so we have a brake line that runs all the way from the rear to the front once again. Um, yes, it's still close to the exhaust pipe here, but what we're going to do is we'll put some heat protection around that and then maybe even put in a little metal shield across there as well. That'll solve that issue. Uh, we've got to do some stuff up top, put an oil filter on it, chuck some oil in it. Actually, we could fire this up today. Maybe we should. Full and clean. So now that we've got our brake line done, we've got our oil filter back on it, so hey, we can fire it up if we want. Um, I want to do something about the header tank, which is this header bottle thing that's up the back of the uh, rocker cover. That's the only way we can get coolant into the car because, you know, there is no other way. Um, except it looks terrible and it doesn't work. Like, it just, it's got a tiny little line that runs down here into the radiator. It is the worst way of filling the radiator ever, and it's the only way. So, I wanna bugger that off, and I'm talking to Josh at, uh, Josh Chapman, at Custom Alloy Welding, and he made this very phallic looking piece for us. Um, he makes all sorts of goodies. He made this uh, idler pulley setup that we've used there to replace the um, power steering pump that we don't have but we're going to replace this thermostat housing here put this in its place which looks so much neater and yeah basically should make it much easier to fill the engine as well with coolant so I'm going to bugger that off put this in its place and uh, yeah it should be happy days much happiness little change that we didn't foresee. So we're gonna to have to flip this coolant line which feeds the uh, turbo. We're gonna to have to just run a 90 down here and then off it goes. So I've just been down the shop and I've got this fitting. It's got like a, uh, a swivel head on it. So 1.8 MPT to dash six, but swivel. So it means we can orientate it any way we like. So I've already previously drilled and tapped this threaded hole in the front of the thermostat housing. So we tried putting our little fitting in there, but it uh, turns out no matter what we're going to do, this is not going to work. Nothing's going to work. Uh, the actual, yeah. It's just too close to the actual housing. And it's not Josh's fault. I mean, I gave him some rough dimensions and this is what he's given us. And it looks fantastic. However, we've got to make it work with what we've got. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is ditch this idea. It's gone. We're going to remove this, remove the actual thermostat housing, take it down to the boys at max. We'll get them to fill in that front hole and we'll do a dash six straight up the butt. And basically that'll be our turbo water feed moving forward. Yeah, I think that's the way we're gonna have to do it. Yeah, but it's not gonna happen today. It is stinking hot and the day's almost over and I'm ready to go home. And tomorrow's a public holiday. So I'll take this off, I'll hand it off to the boys at Max. Hopefully they can knock it over in the next couple of days and then uh, yeah, we'll come back and revisit this thing Another day. Let's go have a drink. Well, it's a brand new day and we've got our piece modified. The boys at Max have punched this out for us. It was a public holiday yesterday, so we were a uh, you know, happy Australia day. Anyway, so we've got a dash six fitting welded to the bottom of our little thermostat housing. We've filled the hole on the front and all I gotta do is drill a hole through the center of the fitting because well, there's no hole. Uh, they've just welded the fitting straight on. So we'll get the drill bit out. We'll pick the drill bit off the floor and then we'll go drill a hole in this thing. So I went down to a uh, parts store and found a piece of hose that kind of had the right angle in it. So cut an end there, cut an end there. I think that's gonna work. Uh, it's gonna be very tight getting that on there because it's slightly smaller size, but we'll silicon spray it. And I'll take that off, get that onto there, and then this end will be easy. So we'll do it that way. So our uh, big donger is a bit big for this uh, little hole. So we're gonna have to uh, kind of give it some lubrication. Uh. 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 There we go. Okay, I think we can all agree that looks a lot better than what was there before. Uh, now I've got to ditch this, so I'll just undo some hoses, and get rid of it. We're just gonna put an overflow line on there. I might even replace that with a 90 to go across there. But yeah, we're getting there. It's the little thing. Okay, so we've got this kind of fixed up. Must admit, not a fan of the, uh, the rubber hose. I think it looks a little bit terrible, so we'll change that out. We'll go full fancy Teflon. It's always the little things that get you. So, we just discussed the fact that I was gonna put this nice Teflon line, got a nice 90 degree fitting already on there on the line and I unscrewed our little hose end from the front and it's a 1 16th NPT, which we don't have any fittings that size. I was gonna use this 1 8 NPT. That's not gonna work. So, went down to see Sticks at Quick Bits. He's our go-to for uh, when we need fittings quickly. He's always got a good stock of fittings on 
the shelf, Raceworks fittings of course. And he has the correct 116th MPT 2-4 AN that we need. So now we can screw that in there. I'll put some thread tape on it in a sec, but yeah, basically that will go in there. And then we go right angle on there. Which will look a lot neater. And then we can feed that away into an overflow bottle. And everything will be good with the world. All right, let's put some Teflon tape on that. People are going to curse me for using a steel spanner on an AN fitting, but it's a stainless fitting. It's not anodized. Rightio, so I think we can all agree that looks so much better. We've got an overflow tank there, like a coolant recovery one from Raceworks. That looks so good now. So it's big thanks to Josh Chapman from Custom Alloy Welding for that. Um, we have never fired this up with that Pulsar Turbo on it. So the Pulsar Turbo, I think it's a 3584R and uh, one of their yeah, Gen 2 series and should make some power on this thing, you know, but uh, obviously we won't be hitting the dyno today. It's like 35 degrees and we are dying in here. So yeah, not much fun. Anyway, let's fire it up. A, see if it runs and B, yeah, let's just fire it up. I wanna, I wanna start it up. See what it sounds like with this side pipe. We have no idea. It's gonna be loud, I'm guessing. Wow, that's loud and it's very, it's blowing very hot exhaust gases onto my leg. So, um, yeah, but it runs, it's alive. Woo! So Lightning McBarrow lives again, it runs. I'm assuming it will drive, it needs a wheel alignment. So that's the next job on the list. You won't see that this episode though. And in fact, we're not gonna bother showing that. We'll just send it around to the boys, get them to do a wheel alignment, then next, time you see it it will be on the dyno at max performance and we'll see how much we can get out of that uh, pulsar 3584 should be able to see you know 23 25 pounds out of this green top we know green tops are good for 25 pounds maybe let's not go to 25 because we know that's kind of you know after that yeah, death but anyway 23 would be fine i think 23 would be fine 23 pounds of boost, that'll be 400 kilowatts plus. That'll be a fair bit of power. Yeah, should be fun to drive. But you're gonna see all that on future episodes of Carnage. <laughs> <laughs>